All right, so welcome to the 13th video in this series on orchestration. In our last video, we covered instrument pairings, including like and unlike doublings, and how to apply them in your music. In this video, we're going to once again shift gears and discuss the percussion section. Now, I purposefully saved these videos for last, because the percussion section introduces a few specific challenges to these videos. Namely, just the overwhelming number of instruments that call this section home. So rather than try to approach these instruments the same way we've approached the previous three sections, I'm going to dedicate this very first video to discussing the four basic types of percussion instruments, and their two subtypes, before tackling a short list of instruments with some special considerations. So with that, let's get started. The percussion section is the largest section in the entire orchestra. It boasts of both the loudest and the quietest instruments available. It's the responsibility of the percussionist to perform many different instruments within the same piece of music. Despite their overwhelming variety, each percussion instrument can be sorted into one of four categories. There are idiophones, membranophones, chordophones, and aerophones. Idiophones consist of any instrument that produces a sound when struck by vibrating across the entire body of the instrument. Some examples would be the triangle, tubular bells, and the xylophone. Membranophones consist of any instrument that produces a sound when struck by vibrating a tight skin or a membrane. Uh, examples would include any and all types of drum. Chordophones consist of any instrument that produces a sound by vibrating a struck or plucked string. These are a bit on the rarer side, but one example would be a dulcimer. Uh, the harp is often considered a chordophone as well, but it's very rarely counted among the percussion section. Aerophones are closely related to wind instruments, and they produce their sound by vibrating a column of air inside of a tube. Some common examples would be whistles or sirens. Within these four types of instruments, there are also two subtypes. We have pitched and non-pitched. Pitched instruments like the timpani and the xylophone have recognizable pitches when played. Non-pitched instruments like the snare drum do not. With that being said, some non-pitched instruments like the cymbal can be said to have a relative pitch, in which no specific note is recognizable, but you can tell when one cymbal has a higher sound than the other. Any percussion instrument you come across can be sorted into one of these four categories. We'll discuss a few specific techniques for them in the next videos, but for the rest of this video, I want to cover a few percussion instruments with special considerations. First up, let's look at the timpani. Now, the timpani is a collection of four to five pitched membranophones, typically played by a specialist in the percussion section. The total range of all the drums spans from a C2 to a C4, or for the entirety of the two octaves just below middle C. Each drum could be tuned to one note at a time, but can be retuned to a different pitch if given sufficient time. The individual range of each drum spans approximately a fifth, with some overlap between each drum size. The lowest drum is the largest, and has an approximate range of C2 to A3. The second largest drum has an approximate range of F2 to C3. The next is B flat 3 to F3, and the fourth is D3 to A4. The fifth drum is a bit rarer than the other four, but it has an approximate range of F3 to C4. So the timpani is best used for fast rhythmic passages in your music and for building up to climactic moments with rolls or with swells. However, due to the limited number of pitches available at any given time, scales and chromatic passages are not typically possible on this instrument. When writing parts for your timpanist, it is best to limit each musical segment to just four or five notes, with each note assigned to a different drum. Many times, this will result in you selecting only the most important pitches that you want to make sure the timpani can accent. Next, let's look at the xylophone. Now, the xylophone is a pitched idiophone. It has a written range of C4 to C6, 
and a sounding range that is an octave higher. It has a very bright and piercing sound, more than capable of being heard cutting through the entire orchestra, and the sound has a very fast decay, which means that it doesn't sustain for very long. This instrument is a fantastic choice for playing both fast rhythmic passages and melodic material, and very often it's used to just double with other instruments to create a new tone color. Next up we have one of my personal favorites, which is the marimba. Another pitched idiophone, this beautiful instrument has a range of C3 to C7. The lower range has an incredibly unique sound to it. It's uh, very warm and almost whimsical, fits really well in fantasy settings. The upper registers sound very similar to the xylophone. One cool thing about the marimba is that it can actually be performed with up to four mallets at a time, with two mallets per hand. When writing for four mallets and only one player, the average maximum interval that's performable with a single hand is about an octave. However, this can change from player to player. So if you happen to know the percussionist you're writing for, feel free to talk with them and find out what they feel comfortable working with. Another one of my favorites is the vibraphone. With a range of F3 to F6, this instrument is a more modern invention, and it actually has a motor. The motor is used to add a little instability to the sound, which makes it a favorite for mysterious or creepy moments in film scores. To use the motor, all you have to do is write motor on over the music and motor off when you're done. Continuing with our theme of pitched idiophones, the next instrument is the glockenspiel. With a written range of G3 to C6, and a sounding range that is two octaves higher, this instrument has a very bright and incredibly piercing sound that's very reminiscent of bells, or almost like chimes. Like the xylophone, it's played with just two mallets. Our final instrument for this video are the tubular bells. These instruments have a very heavy and uh, almost iconic sound to them. With a range of C4 to G5, this pitched idiophone is used very often to mimic church bells in music, and they're very effective for doubling slow melodies or for giving a gothic, um, metallic edge to your harmonies. And with that, we've reached the end of yet another video. Now, there are only three left in this series, so we're rapidly approaching the end. If you found this video helpful and would like to be notified when the next one is released, please like and subscribe to this channel, and please share it with anyone you think might find it helpful as well. In the meantime, thank you so much for your continued support. Keep working hard, keep studying, and as always, keep writing new music.